for the for the next session um we're going to have a presentation on control population data set um the control population data set and disaster disaster project uh, um and it's 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 more of a dialogue um as opposed to a lightning talk so um without taking much more time uh, i think we can go ahead and start i can see the slides have been shared and both speakers are here so let's start hi everyone uh thanks for coming to our session about disaster ninja and contour population data set uh, this is intended as a discussion session, so please post your questions into the chat for everyone as we go, so volunteers can pick them up. If you leave your email, we will make sure to get to you after the session. So, um, hi, I'm Dorothy. I do maps for a long time. I've participated in different companies and projects, and for Spotlight here, I'm with OpenStreetMap for 12 years. Uh, also, if you use PostGIS for your geospatial database, uh, chances you're running some of my code. So if you need to sneak in this patch, just let me know. Hello, everyone. I'm Tanya. I'm GIS analyst at Contour and has been working with population data set all professional life. What is Contour? Contour is a Hawaii-based critical event solution provider. Contour has a development office in Minsk, Belarus, where we are from. And we also have some open positions. Why are we here? So Contour was doing a lot of non-disclosure projects that did not really allow the team to show off our capabilities. And a year and a half ago, we were hanging out in hot Slack, and we observed the activation process for an earthquake, earthquake in Chile. So we've seen all the challenges in starting up the activation and thought that we can help automate this for the future events. Uh, we've looked at how you guys do it, read through the activation protocol, took it apart bit by bit, uh, decided what could be automated and what is still a decision for an activation lead. And uh, after some back and forth, uh, we modernized the main name, one dollar hosting, and pushed out a new product, Disaster Ninja. Here is the interface of Disaster Ninja. You can see which event is happening now in the top left corner. Go and switch to some other if you have done and live in this one. Check out all the lists available for maps in the region. And of course, browse through the, our special baked analytical layers showing general mappedness of region, whether there are enough buildings and roads map. Check out whether there is a local community or how long ago mappers touch a map. You can also see the users in the area and we try to identify locals and highlight them in green. We are pulling the data from reputable open upstream institutions, such as Global uh, Disaster Alerting and Coordination System. Uh, we've uh, also recently replaced the backend side of Disaster Ninja with our commercial product, Contour Event Feed. So HUT is really getting the similar level of attention as our commercial customers do. We have also built a notification engine. Follow the disaster alert channel on hot Slack to get a sense how many disasters are going on daily. There were around 20 disaster notifications yesterday, including the Indian tropical cyclone, several earthquake and volcanic eruption. Um, the other feature that we have uh, is getting the older and other ongoing activations in front of you. So if a region is hit by a disaster multiple times and there is already existing low priority project, maybe just maybe you don't want to, uh, you want to just raise a priority for an old one instead of calling up a new. We also understand that OpenStreetMap is community and communication is crucial in getting things mapped. 
So on Disaster Ninja, we have community spell that gives you links to the social media used by locals to discuss OpenStreetMap. Uh, additionally, we identify locals, so you can click their usernames on the map uh, to get to their OpenStreetMap profile and send them a message. A core feature of our analytical layers on Disaster Ninja is bivariate layers engine. Bivariate layers allow you to see two things at once on a single map. Here you can see red spots, areas that have a lot of people but nothing mapped, and green ones that have something mapped. As you know, all maps are population maps, especially in humanitarian sphere. So why don't we use population maps to find gaps in other kinds of maps? To do so, we need a good data source for a population map. We started initially with Facebook's data and then gradually added more and more data sets into the mix. If you find a nice data set that you believe should be on this list, let us know. I hope that here everyone knows about Facebook. A couple of years ago, Facebook decided this is the only good way to grow its user base. It's to get more users connected to the internet. To get the idea of how much will it cost to build the whole infrastructure, it still used computer vision algorithm on top of satellite imagery to find the houses. But as we figure out, even though the data set is high resolution, unfortunately, they miss some of those available in other data sets named OpenStreetMap. European Union looked at the success of Facebook African data set and kick off its own global version, GHSL. It's based on radar imagery instead of visible light. Instead of building, the algorithm picks up any concrete and asphalt, including roads. Luckily, in Belarus, people don't live in the street. They have cleaned up all these falsely populated roads using OpenStreetMap data. Recently, we have added Microsoft Buildings data into the mix. That made rural USA and Canada a lot more populated and also improve quality a lot in Uganda and Tanzania. We have also removed falsely precise density cells of 0.011% per square kilometer. Now you can really use this data set to see where people don't live, so you don't go to map there. Here's the data set from humanitarian data exchange from the link on the slide, or just search for contrapopulation. It's a two gigabyte GL package that you can use in your own analysis. Thanks, Tatiana. So now this is also a feedback session for Disaster Ninja. Um, the future of Disaster Ninja is open and really is up to us all and we'd love to get a feedback and an input from the audience. Uh, here are some hints to kick off the discussion and with help of our moderators, uh, I hope we will have some time to have this discussion after a couple of slides. Uh, so the session time is very limited, so don't hesitate to send your feedback into the chat window in the corner of Disaster Ninja. Um, and one huge thing that we see in analytics is that there are a lot of visitors from mobile devices. Uh, so how do you think, do we need a better version for, for the phones? Uh, we also got a prototype version of a next generation analytical tool that we've been showing around in the private sessions for a while. So if you believe that we, you would love to explore more layer combinations, let us know. So I've seen the hospital bed capacity mentioned in previous talks, and that's something that we can try visualizing in Power Later. Uh, another thing that's currently in development is uh, real-time data feed uh, with the global wildfires, and we are going to get it out to Disaster Ninja 
in addition as a, to a commercial offer to our customers. So on hot Slack, uh, we had some requests to integrate Disaster Ninja with HOTS Task Manager. And we really would love to explore this more. So if anyone uh, is interested in this or has an idea on how it can look like, uh, please wave us in the chat. Uh, also, recently we have produced a six minute uh, read case study. Thanks a lot, uh, Russell Daphner and the hot team for finding the time for us uh, to, to get it. It's available on our Medium blog and you can find a link on our Twitter. So, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you for letting us present on this fabulous event and I hope moderators can help us with the questions. Okay, yeah, so uh, thank you so much for sharing uh, with us on your, on, on your project and the control uh, population data set. So uh, we, we got one question from Janet Chapman uh, who asked, uh, how do you identify locals for your project? As you had mentioned uh, at the start of the presentation. Thank you for the question, Janet. Uh, so the, the, the way we identify the locals is that we pull in the data uh, that we use. Uh, uh, so each object in OpenStreetMap uh, has a username of last editor attached to it. And we collect that uh, user, those usernames and we cluster them uh, spatially. And the biggest cluster is likely a home location for the users. So we believe that uh, if a person is mapping a lot in some region, they must be local or know something about this. Okay, uh, Janet, uh, Janet, I hope that was answered. Uh, and then the last question uh, was from Adicto and uh, they asked, is it possible to load uh, the Disaster Ninja data set um, into QGIS for further analysis? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, the problem with the daily data set is really to publish it. Uh, so. Uh, we are happy to share a snapshot. So just send us an email and we'll sh send out to you a, a snapshot. Uh, we don't really see a way to publish it daily. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, sure. And the population density doesn't really change that much from, from update to update. So we've put this to humanitarian data exchange. So just grab it there. And take it. Okay. Uh Thank you so much once again for sharing with us. That was a very insightful and enlightening talk. Uh, so uh, right away, we are going to now uh, play the pre-recorded version for uh, the previous talk by Devlesias Chigude on um, using drones uh, for the OSM community in Uganda. So uh, if you're able to load that uh, right away and play that, uh, take team.